Okay, R-rated reviews, trying something new, that adventurous spirit that captivates us before we all die of COVID. Excellent. So what I'm presenting to you today is the 13 science fiction books that I read in 2019. I'm going to rate them all on these nice little tiers that I made that spell books, B-O-O-K-S. Yeah, that's, I feel proud of that. This must be what it feels like to have a child. So effectively, while separating them into tiers, it will magically create my top 10 because the world loves lists. Top 10 peppermint candies, top 10 muffler upgrades for a 1996 Dodge Stratus. We just love lists. So let's get started. Okay, first I'm going to take these three books, Dark Forest, Ancillary Sword, and Shift, and put them in their respective shameful tiers as they did not manage to make the top 10. So we've got Dark Forest here, goes into the not good category. Ancillary Sword, shame, shame on you for writing this. And Shift, also shame on you, shame on you for writing this. So Shift, we can start here with the worst book on our list. It is the second book in the Silo series by Hugh Howey. I rather enjoyed the first entry, Wool, but this book is... It's redundant. It has no suspense. It has awful characters. Without spoiling it too much, it's essentially a prequel to let the readers know how they arrived at Wool, the first book. If you've read Wool, now imagine you're at a dinner party you don't want to be at and Gilbert Gottfried is explaining to you the origins of the book. That's Shift. Also in the shame on you for writing this category is Ancillary Sword. Also happens to be the second book in a series following the critically acclaimed Ancillary Justice by Anne Leckie, which will actually make an appearance higher up on this list. This book had all the same issues as her previous effort with none of the good qualities. Here's the note I wrote while reading. God, this book is awful. T, 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 women, boring conversations, broken China, more T, T and women in space. It's kind of strange because I actually, I like T, I like women, and I like space. And yet somehow when you put all three of them together, it creates the pile of shit that is ancillary sword. But if you have always been waiting for somebody to essentially write a tea party in space novel, then here you go. This book is for you. Moving up into the not good category is Dark Forest, also the second book in a series. Is there a theme here? Oh man, I'm the second child in my family. Is this how my parents feel about me? This is probably not a bad book. I'm just too dumb to understand it. It also doesn't help that all the characters are named Wang, Zhang, Yang, Tong, Zong, Zing. It's impossible to keep them separated, not only because of the similarity in their names, but they just don't have any distinguishable qualities. The author is a computer engineer, and it's very easy to tell. Imagine you're a 15-year-old boy hosting a pool party at your house. All of a sudden, you look up to see Baywatch-era Pamela Anderson galloping towards you in slow motion. Yeah, that's how hard this science fiction is. Okay, let's move up and out of the slums. Coming in at number 10 is The Ghost Brigade by John Scalzi. This is going to go into the obviously there's worse things that you could do with your time category. So The Ghost Brigade by John Scalzi is also the second book in a series, but it has avoided the sinister sequel curse. It's okay. It's fun. It's definitely better than shutting your hand in a car door. You'll see Scalzi's first book in this series a bit higher in this list. He is a seriously prolific writer, and I did feel a bit like a cheap whore reading this one. Oh, so you just write books for everyone now? Coming in at number nine, fittingly, is The Nine Princes of Amber by Roger Zelazny. This is also going to go into the obviously there's worse things you could do with your time category. This is an old science fiction book. It was a bit hard to find, but it's a wild ride. Basically, a private investigator with amnesia discovers he might be a god, and also so are his siblings, and they're all a bit nasty. This book is hallucinogenic at times, and certainly better than a bad mushroom trip. Coming in at number eight is The Forever War 
by Joe Haldeman also goes into the obviously there's worse things you could do with your time category. So this book is basically Vietnam and science fiction having a baby. You fight in a war even though you don't want to. Nobody is sure who's winning. You have no issues with the enemy. You come home and you find that the world has changed. Lieutenant Dan has no legs. Tom Cruise is upset. Robert De Niro is at the longest wedding in history. And Martin Sheen is destroying a motel room. But there are some really neat ideas in here that feel like they're either coming true or certainly could, including online instruction, electronic currencies, shared vehicles, automated jobs, and the most interesting one of all, increased homosexuality as a means of birth control. Hmm. Well then, certainly could happen. I mean, who knows? Maybe I'll be gay by the end of this podcast. Coming in at number seven is Ancillary Justice by Anne Leckie. Also sliding into the obviously there's worse things you could do with your time category. This is a book that I like to call Political Intrigue with Androgynous David Bowie Females in Space, even though her title is probably better. While the wooden characterizations and the slow-mo replay plot speeds that plagued her second book exist here as well, there are enough big science fiction ideas to elevate this, certainly better than not being able to grow a beard but having to trim your nose hair daily. The most delicious sci-fi nugget in here is the idea of an AI controlling a universe with thousands of clones all linked together, but slowly suffering from a sort of mental breakdown. For me, that was the crux of what made this book worth reading, and I'll let you make up your own mind about the strange gender-bending shtick. Coming in at number six is Golden Sun by Pierce Brown. And this is going to move up into the other good books category. This is the second book in Pierce Brown's Red Rising Saga, really action-packed, stunning sequel. I want to hate these books because they're so damn good, and the author is young and handsome and wildly successful. Alas, I'm not the hater I used to be. Definitely pick up this series, and let's help Brown fill his swimming pool with champagne. Coming in at number five is Morningstar. Oops, that's the wrong one. Let's move that over here. Okay, we're back. So Morningstar is the third book in Pierce Brown's Red Rising Saga. I enjoyed this one even more than the second, but not as much as the first. I feel like Goldilocks. These books are definitely going to be Hollywood movies, so you might want to read them first before the movies get made. They all just have that epic built-for-the-screen mood when you're reading them. At number four is Old Man's War by John Scalzi. And despite the title, Old Man's War is actually not a book about me trying to sleep at night without waking up three times to go pee. My first experience reading Scalzi, I was super impressed. He's such a slick and effortless writer. I was smiling a lot through this book, just being charmed by the way he tells a story. There are some interesting ideas in here as well, in particular, the trading of an old body for a younger one if you agree to sign a military contract. Scalzi reminds me a bit of a modern Robert Heinlein. If you haven't checked out any of his books, I highly recommend it. As I said before, his writing is so smooth and accessible. I feel like he's the Disney Plus of science fiction writers right now. Okay, number three is The Lord of Light by Roger Zelazny. And this is the last book that will be in the Other Good Ones category. Roger Zelazny definitely cooked up an interesting crockpot of ideas here. A little Hindu mythology, some Wizard of Oz, a dash of Greek tragedy. I don't think I've ever read anything quite like this. As a reader, you're following Sam, who might be the reincarnation of Buddha, as he decides to overthrow the Hindu gods of an alien planet. The gods aren't actually gods, though. They're actually humans who have somehow manipulated science to such lengths that they might be immortal, and they're certainly regarded as so. The science is so futuristic in this book, it's inseparable from magic, and Zelazny does a masterful balancing act, revealing enough information to string you along, but never enough that this mysteriously wor 
this mysterious world is fully explained. That was my favorite thing about this book is that it it never truly tells you everything, and that's what keeps it so interesting. This book is a trip. I absolutely loved it, and it's definitely worth checking out. So, top two. Book number two on this top ten list is Red Rising. Red Rising, of course, I'm not Pierce Brown's publicist, but this is the origin story in the first book in his series. And for me, the initial shock of discovering something so new, so good, is what puts it so high on this list. I'm trying to avoid spoilers in this video, so let's just say that this is epic, gritty science fiction that demands to be read. While I was reading, I noticed influences from The Matrix, Final Fantasy VII, Avatar, Wolverine, Robin Hobb, The NBA Draft, Ender's Game, Harry Potter, Dune, American Gods, Hunger Games, Player Unknown's Battleground, and Bioshock. And yet somehow, with all these influences, it still manages to feel like his own creation. And now we are finally at number one. Are you still alive out there? Do you need an adrenaline shot to the heart, Pulp Fiction style? Number one is The Stars My Destination by Alfred Bester. The Stars My Destination hosts a veritable Kim Kardashian's booty full of incredible science fiction ideas. Psychic teleportation, carved and copied clerks, lunatic asteroid scientists, underground darkness hospitals, radiation-soaked spy assassins, space circuses, experimental mental torture, and mechanical and genetically implanted enhancements. This book is flawlessly written and features a remarkable and memorable protagonist, Gully Foyle. Foyle is a force of nature as he rips and tears through this story like a tropical storm. This book isn't overly long, and yet it contains a survival story, revenge story, socio-political commentary, hard sci-fi acid trip, and a redemption arc. I think it's a remarkable feat of storytelling and an absolute classic. So yeah, that's it. My top 10 science fiction books that I read during 2019. Let me know if you liked the video, as I also have lists for fantasy and fiction that I might fiddle with as well. I provided links to all the books in the description, so happy reading, and see you next week on Riffs, Rants, Ramblings, R-rated reviews, and other R-words.